Everyone, welcome to the show. So lots of big news and updates to share about investigations into Donald Trump and his allies. So first, the Manhattan District Attorney impaneled a special grand jury to review evidence against Trump in regard to the hush money payments that he paid to porn star Stormy Daniels and Playboy model Karen McDougal. As we all know, Michael Cohen, his former attorney and fixer, spent a, like a year in prison, um, plus additional time under home confinement because of those payments, because they're considered to be campaign donations. They exceeded the legal limit. They were never documented as campaign donations, um, but they were for the benefit of his campaign. Those payments were made to keep the women quiet. We all know that, right? These were about affairs that Trump had, and so they didn't want the, these women to come forward and damage his presidential campaign. We all question for years now why Cohen went to prison, but Trump was never charged. So now we know, thanks to a far too late book that was just published by a former attorney for the Southern District of New, of New York, Jeffrey Berman, in his book, Holding the Line, that's the name of it, Berman admits that Trump's attorney general, Bill Barr, pressured him and his prosecutors to stand down. They told them to drop the investigation into Trump. His office was also pressured into changing documents that were submitted to the court surrounding this whole investigation. They made them remove key details and references to, quote, individual one, which was Trump. We all knew. Um, but instead of going public with this, instead of, you know, truly holding the line, as this guy tries to say he did, and ignoring Trump's AG, he backed down. He let Trump get away with it. He remained quiet. And Trump was off the hook with yet another crime. So, you know, I wonder if Berman and others like him feel any guilt or shame. Indirectly. They are responsible for those officers who were beaten and tasered and sprayed with bear spray on January 6th, because but for the cowardice of people like Berman and these self-serving assholes who waited and published books instead of coming forward and telling what they knew, January 6th would have never happened. So anyway, the grand jury has already heard from several witnesses, including uh, former National Enquirer publisher David Pecker. Um, yeah, I know. Great name. So Pecker, the reason he was there was because he's the one who actually paid McDougal. And then he buried her story on Trump's behalf. It's something known as catch and kill. And then he gave Trump's team a heads up that Stormy Daniels was also shopping her story around. So this Pecker guy was granted immunity to testify in Cohen's case, and so he never faced any kind of prosecution. So we'll see how forthright he is in this new case. Next up is the New York Attorney General's $250 million tax fraud lawsuit against Trump and his family and his company. A video of Trump's deposition was just released, and it shows that he invoked, meaning Trump invoked, his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination more than 400 times. But remember, guys, only the mob and guilty people take the Fifth, according to Trump. And Trump was also just caught making false statements in a new court filing related to that case. Vile Trump attorney Alina Haba filed that, these statements, she wrote that there is no such thing as the Trump Organization. This was in a 5,000-page response. It actually says that the name Trump Organization is just used as branding shorthand. So the organization can't be sued because it's not a legal entity and it doesn't actually exist. The problem for Trump is that the Trump Organization, Inc. has been a registered corporation in New York State since 1981. Plus, Haba herself told the court with her own mouth that she was representing the Trump Organization. In a response to Haba's laughable filing, 
the New York Attorney General pointed out that on November 22nd, Haba appeared before this same judge in this same case, and she stated, quote, Good morning, Your Honor. Alina Haba for Trump Organization, Donald Trump, etc. God, this Haba woman is dumber than a bag of rocks. Haba also wrote that Trump denies, quote, each and every allegation that he was the inactive president of the company while he was president of the United States. Yeah, well, in another case that involved, which you guys will remember, involved his security guards beating up protesters, an attorney asked Trump, quote, was there a period of time that you were not the president of the Trump organization? And Trump replied under oath, quote, well, I wasn't active during the time I was at 1600. I would say that I was an inactive president and now I'm active again. So 1600 refers, of course, to the address of the White House. So the attorney general's office is now asking the judge to sanction Trump and his attorneys because they've made verifiably false statements to the court. And it just might happen because this judge has already warned Trump and his legal team that they are on his last nerve because he has submitted what the judge has referred to as frivolous legal arguments. But everything's going great for Trump, you guys. Have no fear because Alina Haba recently appeared on a show called His Glory. And she told the audience, quote, we've been winning. <laughs> I am dead serious. Haba told them, quote, when people bring cases against Trump, which worries a lot of people, when you have those, but they're not within merit, there are systems in place, even when you have crooked judges, appellate division, etc. And we've been winning. And she said, quote, everything is going to be fine. <laughs> this reminds, she reminds me of that gif with, um, I think it was from like Loaded Gun or something, or one, one of those, one of those funny films um, where he stand, the guy's standing in front of a burning building at, or like a burning plane or something is like, oh, everybody go back to what you were doing. Everything's fine. <laughs> And then Hoppe told the audience that Trump, quote, has always been by the book. So I will see you all in 2024. Really? By the book and winning. Yeah. Is that why his corporation was just fined $1.6 million for tax fraud and his CFO is in Rikers Island? Yeah. And I guess that's why the Florida judge just slapped him and Hoppe with nearly $1 million in sanctions because they're by the book, guys, and they're winning. <laughs> so let's talk a little more about this winning, shall we? Last week, U.S. District Judge Amit Mehta denied Trump's request to dismiss the case brought by U.S. Capitol Police officers. This is the case in which they're suing Trump and other people as well um, for the Capitol attack. And this is the second time that the judge has ruled against Trump's request for dismissal. So, nope, no winning there. Then, in a case brought by a former Trump staffer named Jessica Denson, she alleges that his campaign sexually discriminated against her and other female workers, and she said that she was bullied. So that case was allowed to proceed, and now Steve Bannon has been ordered to comply with a subpoena to sit for a deposition. So no winning in that one either. Uh, then it was also just revealed that when special counsel John Durham was reviewing the Mueller investigation, authorities in Italy alerted Durham to potential financial crimes committed by Trump. No charges were ever brought, but now we know that Barr completely had his thumb on the scale in that Durham investigation. And it still yielded nothing, an investigation that was a complete failure. Durham found no evidence whatsoever of a, of a so-called deep state plot against Trump. 
he wasn't able to secure a single conviction, unlike in the Mueller probe. And the Senate Judiciary Committee, because this information has come out, they've announced that they're going to be holding hearings and investigating Durham and Barr's actions. So no winning there whatsoever. So the only kind of sort of temporary win that Trump had relates to Peter Navarro. As you guys all know, former Trump aide Peter Navarro was supposed to go on trial for refusing to comply with the January 6th Select Committee subpoena. Navarro claimed without any evidence that he had executive privilege that was granted to him by Trump, so he didn't have to comply with that subpoena. He had nothing in writing. Trump never came forward to say, yep, I, I told him not to say a word. Well, now in the 11th hour, while Navarro's facing jail time, one of Trump's shady attorneys issued a January 23rd letter just this last month to Navarro stating, quote, this confirms President Trump's position that as one of his senior advisors, you had an obligation to assert executive privilege on his behalf and fully comply with the principles of confidentiality stated above when you responded to the committee's subpoena. So the judge in this case, also Amit Mehta, has delayed Navarro's trial. They're trying to work through what he referred to as uncharted territory. So we'll see where that goes. But yeah, winning and by the book. Yeah, that really describes Donald Trump. <laughs> oh, Haba. She makes me laugh like a clown. I give her that. Thank you, Haba. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please donate or become a monthly supporter really means the world to me. Thank you all so much. Love you guys. Take care and I'll talk with you soon.